I've been flying these RCX 2633KV motors for a while now, and I have a video that I posted a little while back about my impression of which props were good or bad for this motor. Uh, but I didn't bother to put anything on a thrust stand and really do any good. You know, thrust stands, they're not perfect. They don't tell you how the prop's actually going to perform in the air, but they, you know, they're, they're still useful information. Basically, I just was lazy and would rather be flying, so I didn't bother. And you can find some thrust tables for these motors out there, but they're missing a lot of the props that uh, I'm really curious about, like the Dow props and the HQ5040 are sometimes not on there. So I got to say a huge thank you to Wuzzlepunked for linking me to this uh, table that he's maintained with all this data for this motor and several props that I like a lot, including the Dow TJ5045, yes, and the HQ5040. No straight uh, HQ, no straight 5040 two blade props though. So that's unfortunate. Uh, but the gem fan 5045, and I think there's something really interesting to see here. Higher KV motors are not as able to handle, uh, high, more aggressive props as lower KV motors. Some people say they have less, th uh, torque and other people say that that's no, no, that's not correct. That, that uh, they have the same amount of torque and that's a function of the stator diameter and actually there's some other fun I don't know, I'm not going to get into that. But the bottom line is that higher KV motors are less able to uh, spin a more aggressive prop. And this data really shows that very, very clearly. So if we zoom in a little on this data, let's just go through the list and find the most efficient, no, not most efficient, that's not what I mean really, the least current uh, five inch prop. So the Gemfan 5045 makes uh, about 21 amps of current and the Dow 5045 Bullnose V2 makes 21 amps of current. And those two make 960 grams and 946 grams of thrust. So about, about 950 grams of thrust for about 21 amps. If we go to the next highest current draw, we find the HQ5040 by three is 25 amps, yes. Okay, so now we've got about 25, 26 amps for 1,014 grams of thrust. So 50 to 70 more grams of thrust for four more amps. That's, you know, that's not nothing, but but it's your, your, your amps are really going up for not a lot more thrust. Okay, but let's, let's keep looking. Now we've got 26 amps, almost 27 amps for the Dow TJ5045, which is a tri-blade. It's got a very similar blade profile to the Gemfan 5045, not identical, but very similar, and it's making 989 grams of thrust. So we basically got 27 amps here for 989 grams of thrust and uh, 21 amps here for 960 grams of thrust. Interesting, isn't it? We're basically pulling uh, six more amps for very, almost no gain. And if we keep looking, we can see Here's a 5040 by three, it must be two separate tests, I guess, because that's the same prop. We keep going, we get the Gemfan 5050 by three, pulling 30 amps, making 984 grams of thrust. And here's a Dow 5045 bullnose by three. Oh, very aggressive. That I believe is that square tipped bullnose, which is horrible for efficiency on the best day. 995 grams of thrust, 33 amps. So what you should see if you study these numbers is that there's a point where as the prop gets more aggressive, you're just pulling more amps and you're, you're not making more thrust. In fact, you're making less thrust, most likely because the motor is spinning slower because it can't spin the prop as fast. So even though the prop is more aggressive, it's making less thrust, but you're deaf, you're pulling way more amps. And look, here's the most aggressive prop, the Gemfan 5550. That's a 5.5 inch prop with a five inch pitch, pulling 35 amps, 36 amps. That's the highest amp draw on the test, making 1,084 grams. Okay, well, at least, at least this made more thrust than any other prop, but look at the difference. To go from 984 grams, no, I don't like that one, uh, 995 grams, uh, about 960 grams. To go from 960 grams to 1,084 grams, that is 
124 extra grams of, so maybe 10% more thrust, you went from 21 amps to 34 amps. Is it worth it? I don't think so, obviously. And what you can take from this is that these more aggressive props are just not a good fit for this motor, okay? If you're on 4S and you're pulling, now, now granted these are on the bench, these props are going to unload a little bit in the air. They will perform better in the air than they do on the bench. That is a fact. So, for example, I feel like the uh, the TJ5045 and the 5040x3, the HQ5040x3, are a very good fit for this. And I found that they were, they I was not pulling 80 amps, you know, maybe at full throttle. But I feel like those were very good fit for this motor. But you can see that that there's a point where you're just not making any more thrust and you're drawing a ton more amps. So pay attention, I guess, is my takeaway on this. Don't take these bench numbers as gospel because, again, in flight, the prop will perform differently than it does on the bench. As the airflow moves over the prop, the prop will unload. The motor will have to work less hard. It's kind of like if you're not familiar with this concept, it's kind of like if you were uh, if you were you know rolling something heavy. It would be real hard to get it going, but then once it was rolling, you could more easily keep it going. Kind of like that. As, as the prop spins and the copter is moving, the prop unloads, they say, and the motor doesn't have to work as hard. So the practical effect is that your current draw and your motor efficiency in the air is going to generally going to be more efficient and less current than on the bench. But the bench is still indicative of something, and that is that as you get into these more aggressive props, you do not get more thrust. There's a point where you don't get more thrust, but you pull way more current. And that's because this is a high KV motor. It is not optimally matched to these more aggressive props. So uh, I, I feel like these numbers really bear that out. So if you want to run these more aggressive props, like the uh, like the 5550s or the bullnose triples, right? The square tip bullnose triples. And those are great props. Uh, those props can, can make a copter scream uh, on the right motor. But the 2633 kV, these high kV motors, like the Schizo 2500 kV motor, uh, they're not the right motor for these props. Uh, I feel like 2633 kV is actually a really sweet spot. 25 to 2700 kV is actually a really sweet spot for 5-inch props. It didn't used to be, and I think that motor manufacturers have gotten better. Like, why didn't we see 2600 kV motors before? Why did everybody run... 2300 kV motors, and some people even ran 2000 or 1950 kV motors on 5-inch props. Why Why is that? And now we're running 26, 25, 2700 kV motors. And I think it's because the motor manufacturers have just gotten better. And I feel like right now, 26, 25 to 2700 kV is a real sweet spot for 5-inch props. And that if you're running 2300 kV motors and you're not using a really aggressive prop, then you may be leaving some speed on the board, on the table. I, I don't know. I could be wrong about that, but that's my hunch right now. If you're running 5040s or 5045 uh, two-blade props, I think a 2600 kV motor is going to beat you over a 2300 kV. And it's only if you're taking advantage of that additional mm, torque, whatever you want to call it, by having a more aggressive prop that, that the 2300 kV motor is going, to, uh, is going to make up the difference. That's my hunch. I haven't done any side-to-side -side testing. I actually have a set of 2000 kV motors right now. They're very nice motors. They're Lumineer motors. Uh, they were sent to me by Lumineer, and I'm not 100% sure what I want to do with them. I don't feel like there's maybe maybe the 5550. I don't feel like there's a 5-inch prop right now that those would be the very best motors to put on it. I feel like those motors would be better for six or maybe like some 6040s, except I'm not really interested in flying a 6-inch copter. Anyway, now I'm just uh now I'm just rambling. But uh yeah, uh if you're going to fly these high KV motors, do not overprop them. You'll pull a ton more current and you will not go any faster. Now, where exactly that point is, we could have some debate, but it's somewhere before the 5550, okay? Don't, I, you, I, I would be shocked if you show me a test where the 5550 beats, for example, the 5040 by 3 or, uh, or, or just a plain old 5040 two-blade even, I don't know, on this motor. Anyway, there you go. Hope that's interesting. Thank you again to Wuzzle uh, for this data, and as always, happy flying.